we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is How Hacks Work. This episode is all about that most wonderful time of the year, Christmas. We've made a list of hacks and we've checked it twice, so get ready for some tinsel-covered tips to help the festive season go with a bang. From insane tree decorations, an awesome Christmas lights hack 65 million years in the making, and an all-in-one seasonal feast. For me, food is something that should be treasured and loved. The flagrant abuse of a Christmas dinner in this way is something that cannot be tolerated. And in our epic hack, we'll be pulling out all the stops to show you how to clear away the Christmas feast in seconds. That was the best Christmas hack ever. Nothing says Christmas like a traditional tree and a roaring fire, but that's not always possible in the office, is it? Well, look no further than our very first Christmas clip. Using blinking modems and a TV fire, these office workers have given the traditional festive spruce a high-tech Christmas makeover that will put a twinkle in anyone's eye. Since Christmas is a time for staying in touch with friends and relatives, that making a Christmas tree out of Wi-Fi routers and phones, you know, all communications devices, is probably quite appropriate. Christmas lights are incredibly energy intensive. Um, they suck a huge amount of power, whereas there aren't any actual Christmas lights being used here. I guess if you've got enough time on your hands, why not try it? But uh, I think they'd have a bit of trouble getting all the lights going at exactly the same time. You don't have to throw it out on New Year's Day, it won't cover your carpet in needles, and it will give you the best Wi-Fi signal in the world. This is a high-tech Christmas hit. Christmas may be the funnest holiday of the year, but it sure can get messy. Unless you own a robotic hoover, that is. Finally, the perfect antidote to a tree that sheds tinsel everywhere. The vacuums don't actually know the shape of the room and what's in it, but it follows a series of really simple behaviours that's pre-programmed into them in order to know exactly where to go. No, Anna, it's not pre-programmed behaviours. It's a magical Christmas tree, OK? The more clever ones have little infrared sensors. So that's like a type of light. You can't see it with the human eye, but it bounces off objects and it detects what comes back. And when eventually the light bounces back and hits the receiver, then it knows it's got close enough to something that it has to stop. To be honest, I think it's a bit of a fail. I think it's probably going to make more mess than it solves. Bah humbug, Chris. This tiny tree cleaner is the perfect gift for the busy Christmas host. A ho ho hack hit! Now, if you're really on a roll with wrapping this year, this next hack is a brilliant quick solution to wrapping small presents. And you won't need to go further than your bathroom for the materials. With nothing more than a used toilet roll, you can make your stylish mini gift box. The way you make toilet roll tubes is actually kind of cool. It takes these two different layers of card and wraps them around one another with some glue. But it actually makes about roughly a metre, maybe more, of this tube. I think Chris's definition of cool may be wildly different to most other humans. Now, when you bend cardboard permanently, what you're doing is you're breaking these forces apart and they then can't reform. So the whole material itself is permanently deformed. I do think it's probably going to take more time to make the tube than it is to buy the gift in the first place. You wonder. You certainly do, as if Christmas wasn't busy enough without having to find the extra time to knock up this festive wrapping. And this... If you're one of those people who think decorating the Christmas tree is boring, prepare to have your mind changed. Using loo roll guns and a homemade bazooka, this Father Christmas is severely hacking the halls. Putting up the Christmas tree is always like the best bit of anything, but he has taken it to the next level. 
In this hack, there's a really lovely example of equal and opposite reaction forces. When he fires the cannon, the explosion forces the objects out of the front of the cannon, but in doing that, it requires an equal and opposite reaction force. And you can see this as the tube goes through his grip. Most synthetic fake snow is made of a type of polymer, and these are things like plastics. When you mix certain polymers with water, they tend to absorb it and they trap it between the meshes of the different strands. This means they form these like gelatinous structures and they look like snow. Synthetic snow has definitely got this savvy Santa's lawn looking as festive as his tree. But how does the real stuff actually work? You may have heard that no two snowflakes are exactly the same, but there is one thing they all have in common. If you get up close and personal, you'll see that any snowflake has six sides, or arms, even if the shapes are different. To understand why, you need to go right down to individual molecules of water, which are made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, all joined together in a specific shape. When snowflakes form, these individual molecules join together. The hydrogens like to face the oxygens, which fix together as six-sided shapes. As more and more molecules join, these six-sided shapes continue to grow into bigger and more elaborate six-sided structures, and a snowflake is born. And so is a truly memorable hack. For sheer unbridled enthusiasm, this amazing Christmas tree decorating tip is getting a ho-ho-ho hack heat. Coming up at Hack HQ, we'll be seeing how crackers get their crack. I love crackers. <laughs> Everyone loves crackers, Marcus. And knowing Mike, it will be a big one. So far, we've shown you how to tech up your Xmas with an IT tree, a toilet roll tip for top wrapping, and a tree decorating hack from the most insane Santa in the Southern Hemisphere. Don't go for that post-Christmas lunch snooze yet, though, because coming up, we've got an extreme Christmas tree sleigh, a gut-busting festive snack, and in part one of our epic hack, Mike will be bringing some pyrotechnics to the Christmas dinner table. That is one of the best Christmas hacks ever. Now on to the serious subject of presents. If you have a mate who has everything, this next hack is an ingenious gift idea, without actually having to buy anything. Yep, why not just wrap up all their current possessions? Of course, with the amount spent on wrapping paper here, these lads could have probably just gone on holiday for a week. The one thing I would say about this hack is it's not great for the environment. Wrapping paper actually contains little bits of plastic often to give it those textures uh, and those little uh, decorations, so it's very difficult to recycle. This can disrupt the pulping process and make the new paper not particularly good because the fibres in the pulp can't stick together as well if there's any oil in the way. We're looking at about 45 million tonnes of paper going into wrapping and packaging every single year in the US alone. That is a lot of paper. Yeah, and another 45 million on this hack. Giving somebody their own bedroom as a Christmas present may be funny, but try telling that to Mother Nature. A humbug of a miss. What's better than sledding through the snow on Christmas morning? Swapping that sleigh for a Christmas tree, apparently. Your ultimate sledge, we're looking at something that has low friction and a certain amount of rigidity. Okay, you want minimum contact with the surface, but enough so you stay on top of the snow. And that's why this tree is a terrible idea. Actually, Andrew, low friction is just one reason using a Christmas tree as a sled could bring a whole new meaning to Christmas break. The needles of a Christmas tree are more than just spikes. If you give them a feel, they're also equipped with a waxy layer called cutin and it's this sticky substance that's their secret to surviving the cold. Inside, the needles are made up of cells filled with water. The problem is that when water freezes, it expands and can cause these cells to burst. As winter descends, Christmas trees try to let water leave the cells so they don't get damaged. But thanks to their waterproof layer of cutin, instead of causing saggy leaves, everything stays trapped safely inside the needles, keeping them sharp and nourished. Unfortunately for this guy, it's thanks to this waxy cutin that this hack isn't going anywhere. Useless, yes. Pointless, definitely. Fun, possibly. A hack miss. No Christmas day would be complete without a gut-busting Christmas sandwich. But have you ever considered replacing Christmas lunch altogether with this traditional bread feast? This next guy has the recipe for you. 
Using panettone as bread is the first genius idea of this festive feast, and it only gets better from here. Salmon, prosecco, crisp sausage, turkey, veg, gravy, chocolate, nachos, minced pies, Christmas pudding, and of course cranberry sauce all fit into the world's most amazingly, disgustingly delicious Christmas sandwich. For me, food is something that should be treasured and loved. The flagrant abuse of a Christmas dinner in this way is something that cannot be tolerated. The average person consumes around 7,000 calories on Christmas Day, which is a lot more than the recommended 2,000 to 2,500 that doctors recommend. If this guy chews as fast as he talks, I'm confident he'll be able to raise that average to 20,000 calories in no time. You can think about it like this. 7,000 calories is roughly the amount of energy that you burn off after playing 12 consecutive hour-long basketball games. Surely lifting that sandwich up a few times will burn about a thousand calories. It's massive! This gastronomic hack may stuff your festive feast into one handy package, but you'd be wiping the floor clean after just one mouthful of this huge snack. The jury's out on this calorific Christmas feast. Let's turn Santa's sleigh towards Hack HQ now, where our very own father, Hackmas, is preparing an epic cracker hack and a flaming pudding display with a very special little helper. Mike! Marcus, you really look like you're in the Christmas spirit. I love Christmas. Turkey, stuffing, mince pies, Christmas pudding, brandy sauce. Love the food, but... There's always so much leftovers, man. So many leftovers. There is, but I think I've got something in my stocking that will solve that. Indigestion tablets. Has it got something to do with these crackers? Because I love crackers. <laughs> Everyone loves crackers, Marcus, but there's actually a lot of explosive science in a cracker. Really? I thought all that happens is you pull one end, I pull the other, bad joke comes out, and an even worse toy. Well, there is that, but inside a cracker, you've got this thing, and there's two rough surfaces inside this cardboard, and then there's chemicals, the chemicals that make the bang. Right. So that is silver fulminate. Want to pull one? Yeah, let's have a go. Three. Now you see that? Just the rough surfaces inside here created enough friction to set that silver fulminate off. It is really sensitive, more so than nitroglycerin. Cool. So a little bit of silver fulminate makes a pretty good bang, but I'm with you, Mike, so let me guess. More silver fulminate, big bang. Yeah, all right, hold your horses. I've got a little bit more. Oh, I feel like a kid on Christmas Eve. <laughs> right, so in here, I've got a tiny amount of silver fulminate, about half a gram. Got it in some blue touch paper. We like that. Stand well back, see what happens. So half a gram, what's that like compared to the amount that's in a cracker? Right, in a Christmas cracker, it is micrograms. It's barely a speck of dust inside there. Put on some safety glasses. Cool. That's what everyone wants to hear on Christmas Day. I'm gonna light the blue touch paper. Stand well back. You ready? Yep. Okay. Blue touch paper's lit. All right. <laughs> oh! <laughs> right, so half a gram, right? Oh, look at that. The explosive force of silver fulminate. It's blown a hole all the way through that can. That is nuts. I'll tell you what, Mike, you a turbocharging my Christmas. Not only have I got crackers, which I love, food, which I love, you're blowing holes in bean cans as well. I know, I know, but my favourite part of all is always setting fire to that Christmas pudding. Mike's favourite part of Christmas is setting fire to something. I didn't see that coming. I've got something that will make it look even better on your table. Show me. Oh, I might need a hand with this. All right, cool. Okay. What is this? Right. I've never seen a Christmas pudding prepared like this before, Mike. <laughs> it's not Mike style unless it is. Okay. Christmas pudding. Yeah? Mm-hmm. We need our fuel, our brandy to stick on top of it. And I'm gonna use this. Straight alcohol. <laughs> that doesn't look like any kind of Christmas pudding I've ever seen. No, that's because it's a Mike style Christmas pudding. I believe Mike style has been established by now. I'm going to fire this up. Stick that on, and then we'll get some action going. Go. Do I need safety goggles? Let's assume yes, Marcus. Okay. And then we turn up the power. Right. 
Look at that! <laughs> what do you call this? This is a fire tornado Christmas pudding. Slow it down a bit. Not sure many people will want to create a fire tornado on Christmas Day, Mike. So what is going on here exactly? So we're making a vortex. The mesh around the outside is actually vortexing all of the air inside and it's pushing it around and round. The fire wants to go upwards, so it just makes this beautiful spiralling tornado of flames. OK, so this cage is using air turbulence to guide the flames exactly. into a shape that looks pretty cool and make a fire tornado. Yeah, I mean, it's the ultimate way to impress your friends and family at Christmas. Well, that or gift vouchers. It is indeed. This is the best Christmas ever. But level with me, Mike. Are you going to help me out with those leftovers? Because I hate leftovers. I've got just the thing, and I think it will sort out your new year as well. Oh. Make sure you leave room for more epic festive activity later, because Mike is going to show us a hack that will make you always look forward to the great Christmas clear-up. So far, we've seen a truly super-sized seasonal sandwich hack, a Christmas tree sleigh for the very brave, and bedroom decorations that will have your Christmas all wrapped up, literally. Still to come, we've got a neat fairy light folding hack, an excellent prehistoric festive light display, and in our epic hack conclusion, Mike will be showing us the best, fastest, and most explosive way to clear up on Christmas Day. Now, sometimes even Santa needs a plan B, and this next video shows a great alternative travel mode if your flying reindeer are playing up. You can't blame Rudolph and co not wanting to fly in this weather. Doesn't look very Christmassy at all. Before popping his parachute, Santa would have reached terminal velocity. Terminal velocity, which is an awesome phrase, is basically the maximum speed that you will reach if you are dropped out of something like a plane. What a parachute does is it adds a lot of drag. This is air resistance, and what we hope to do is use that force to slow down our descent due to gravity. Ideally, we can get to a point where we don't break our legs when we hit the floor. St Nicholas might be amazing at controlling flying deer, but he's not cut out for the parachute regiment. This is one high-flying festive hack I would not recommend a miss. We all know the nightmare of tangled decorations when you come to dusting off that Christmas tree. Don't you want just one year when you don't spend an entire day untangling fairy lights? Just one? Come on, people. We deserve this. Pay attention. By folding the lights carefully and exactly by using the length of wire between one light and the next as your folding points, you create a neat light storage hack that is simply breathtaking. Mathematics of knotting is actually pretty complicated, but it mostly boils down to the longer the string and the more flexible the material, then the more knots you're more likely to get. So you reach the end, and now you do the wraparound yeah. manoeuvre. Yeah. And ta-da! Ta-da! Into the box they go. Most old-school Christmas lights were done on a series circuit, which means each light was in line on electrical wire. Now what that means is that if one bulb blows, the whole circuit is now done. You'll thank us next year when you have a collection of perfectly presentable, fabulously festive, and most importantly, neat and tidy fairy lights. This is a Christmas hack hit with lights on. For our final festive hack, we're going to show you how easy it is to put up decorations if you dress as a Cretaceous predator. That's right, get ready for the T-Rex Christmas light hack. Dinosaurs around about 100 million years ago, died out 66 million years ago, so they wouldn't have even known about Christmas. I think this one's faked. Is it faked? Is it faked? 243 million years ago, actually, George, but what's a few epochs between friends? Normally, an animal over, over the course of time will lose parts of their body that they don't need, which is why a snake it used to be a lizard, but then it lost its limbs because it didn't need them anymore. So the, because a T-Rex still had its small limbs, we can ask ourselves, well, why did they need to use them? Researchers suggested to aid mating as close-quarter weapons to hold prey and to push themselves off the floor. Who's a scientist here, James? You or me? This prehistoric hack proves once and for all that T-Rex wouldn't last a second in today's modern times, especially around Christmas. A mega-sized miss. Over to Hack HQ. The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong for Mike to handle. 
And with his trusty guinea pig, Marcus, he'll try anything so that you don't have to. Earlier, Mike showed us a very loud way to pimp up your Christmas crackers before creating a fiery pudding display that will get the neighbours talking. Now, though, it's onto the more annoying part of Christmas, the clear up. Don't worry, he's got a hack for this too. What happened to the onesie? Put it back in the wardrobe. Don't like to wear it out. Save it for every Christmas. Fair enough. Boo! What is that? <laughs> that, my friend, is my way of getting rid of your dreaded Christmas leftovers. Mike, your Christmas dinners are mental. You've got all of my favourite foods, banana gravy, one grape trifle, a melon, cabbage by itself, pineapple, but the leftovers for this, man. Oh, yeah, of course, Mike. Watermelon, that classic Christmas treat. The last thing you want to do after you've eaten a massive Christmas meal is clear up, right? Clear up? I can barely move after Christmas dinner. Yes, I hate clearing up. So all I've got is loads of explosives shoved into all of this food, one press of that button, kaboom, the whole lot is gone. Good to see you thinking out of the box on this one, Mike. Let's light it up. Let's do it. We need some safety equipment. Right, cool. He is on first. All right. Full face shield for this one. <laughs> nice and Christmassy. A little Christmas touch. OK. I think we should take a couple of steps back. All right. All right. I think we're ready. Are you ready? Ready. OK. Three, two, one. <laughs> 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 that was amazing, man. <laughs> oh. That, oh my god. That was the best Christmas hack ever. I know, but don't forget New Year. Got a little bit of something for that. Is that it? I've heard louder crackers than that. Well, if that's all you've got, I think I'll go out for New Year. Oh! Hey! <laughs> oh, cheers, Mike. Confetti for New Year. New Year's confetti, but I can't go anywhere like this for New Year's. No, you're right. Um, you'd better get clearing up. Oh. Merry Christmas, Mike. Yeah. Happy New Year. Ah, <gasps> crackers. Christmas always goes so quickly, doesn't it? Well, so do our shows, because that's the end of our amazing Christmas edition of How Hacks Work. Eat, drink, and be hacky. Ho, ho, ho. We'll see you next time for more amazing life hacks. Yeah.